Greetings to you all at home in the wonderful name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us all come together and praise and worship our Lord. Amen. Yes, I love him. 
Greetings in the wonderful name of Jesus. Thank you so much for joining us on the second Sunday of 2021. It is a privilege and an honor to stand before you and bring you the word of God. We are entering into an incredible season as of tomorrow morning into our season of 14 days of fasting and prayer. We are seeking God's face as a church for about 14 days where we can gather around the word of God, gather around prayer, uh, gather around you know, just just ministering to other people uh, so that we can be refreshed during the season uh, as it's January. We will be posting on social media how we can do this fast. I'm not going to go into those uh, details this morning, but I want to encourage you. Uh, God has given me a word about fasting today and showed me just a bit of a picture what precedes fasting. Uh, today, I want to I want to speak, I want to talk on that subject to say what proceeds. Fasting, and I want us to turn to the book of Mark. We'll be taking our reading from the book of Mark, chapter 1, from verse 7 to 13. Uh, but before we go there, I want to start also in Luke chapter 4. The Bible says in Luke chapter 4, from verse 14, it says, Jesus returned to Galilee. I love it. It says, I return, Jesus returned to Galilee in power, in the power of the Spirit, and news about him spread through the whole countryside. So let's notice this. The Bible says that Jesus returned to Galilee. This is after his fasting and prayer. I want to talk about what precedes fasting. But before I talk about what precedes, the Bible says when he returned from fasting, he returned in power and in the spirit. And news about him spread through the whole countryside. So let's run to the book of Mark chapter 1 from verse 7 to 13. The Bible says that, and this was his message. Mark is speaking here. He's saying, this was the message of John. Uti, after me comes the one more powerful than I. This is John speaking. The straps of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I baptize you with water but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. At this time, Jesus came from Nazareth, Nazareth and in Galilee uh, and was baptized by John in the Jordan River. Just as Jesus was coming out of the water, the, he saw, this is John, he saw heaven being torn open and the Spirit descending on him, on Christ, like a dove and a voice came from heaven you are my son whom i love with you i am well pleased ah uh, at once the spirit now watch this at once the spirit sent him out into the wilderness at once the spirit uh, the book of the book of john says he was led the book of matthew says he was led by the spirit into the wilderness uh, where he fasted and prayed for 14 days being tempted by Satan. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the reading of your word. 
We thank you that today you're going to minister to us with the subject of fasting. What precedes fasting? Uh, we know that you have something in store for us. I thank you that you're blessing every ear that is able to hear and you're opening up the hearts of your people so that we may be able to connect with what your spirit is communicating with us through this gospel. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. amen. The book of Mark chapter 1 from verse 7. Mark is narrating the story of John in how John the Baptist baptized Jesus. The Bible says that the Bible says that Jesus came from Nazareth, which was in Galilee, to be baptized by John. Scripture is very clear that Jesus did this. Utu John, uh, I believe it's in the book of Matthew. Utu John, I'm not worthy for you to baptize me. Utu Jesu, this must happen so that I can fulfill the law and the prophets. So it's important for us to understand that the baptism of John, just as a contextual, from a contextual place, we must understand that the baptism of John, Jesus was being baptized by John, not because Jesus needed it, but because he needed to fulfill the law and the prophets of our lives. Now the Bible says Jesus came, love it, he came from Nazareth, which was in Galilee, to be baptized by John. The book of, uh, 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 the book of John, the book of John chapter, chapter 1 from verse 46, the Bible says, uh, when Philip found Nathaniel, he told him that we found the Savior, we found the Messiah. Utu, utu Nathaniel in response, what good can come from Nazareth? What good can come from Nazareth? The Bible is very clear that Jesus came from Nazareth. This is a picture of someone that's coming from normality. There's nothing special that comes from, from Nazareth. There's nothing special in Zagala in Nazareth. Jesus did not come from Jerusalem, which was the epicenter, the capital of the time, but he came from Nazareth. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't come from Rome. He didn't come from one of these, from one of these big uh, Greek cities. No, he came from Nazareth. And today I want to say today that wherever you are coming from, wherever God is finding you or where you are finding God, uh, it doesn't matter. You can be coming from the worst place, from the worst December, from the worst lifestyle, from the worst decisions. You, you can be coming from a place of obscurity. But the Bible says Jesus came from this place to be baptized by John. He came and and as you're coming today, I want you to know that something proceeds fasting. And today we're going to answer that question. Before Uzile, konte faneli enze gempele niyaku. Because kulu ulu kutu svatani skulu menge fasting, sing as prepare anga. Ukuti fasting, fasting aksigu ilambis. If fasting is such a strong spiritual attitude that we need to have before God, but if we are unprepared for it, sing I lambel and your 14 days, and it's absolutely useless. But that will be the end of it. And Jesus is saying, He's coming from Nazareth. Today, He's coming. You're coming from the place, eh, 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 nazi, where you've just been wandering around. Nothing is really happening in your life. And you're coming to God to be baptized. Now, let me run so that I don't lose time. The Bible says that He came and He was baptized by water. Number one, it's important that we are baptized by water. What is being baptized by water? The, Bible's is, the Bible is very clear that the baptism of John was the baptism of repentance. So you cannot fast without being repentant. So when you come into the place, what proceeds fasting is the baptism of John, which is the baptism from repentance, the turning from sin. Now, when you see Jesus being baptized, Jesus lived a sin-free life. So that actual baptism was him describing or displaying for us that as a man, this is what we need to go through so that we can be able to, pro so that we can enter into the place of fasting. He's headed to the wilderness to be tested. 
He's headed to the place where he's going to spend time with the Father. But before you spend time with the Father, you have to be baptized with the baptism of repentance. That means turning our hearts from, sinful, from a sinful place, turning our hearts from attitudes that are wrong, turning our hearts from willful sinning, turning our hearts from, from a heart of unforgiveness, turning your, 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 your mindset from a, your, your heart not being set on the things of God, repenting for not spending time with God, repenting from deeds, repenting from actions, you have what proceeds fasting is repentance. Number one, this baptism is also, this baptism displays the death. Jesus Christ, as he's being baptized, he's prophesying of his death and his resurrection. As he's baptized, he's prophesying that I'm going to a cross, I'm going to die as I enter this water, and when I rise up, I'm going to be raised after three days and be raised in glory. What precedes fasting is the baptism. The baptism into repentance. Number two, what precedes fasting is the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now watch, scripture says, scripture says, at that time Jesus came from Nazareth in Galilee and was baptized by John. Number one, repentance. Number two, Je no, by the way, he's being baptized, Mark is clear, it's in the Jordan. That means he's being baptized to repentance. In other words, the Jordan was a river of transition. That means when you went through the Jordan, you went from one place, you left, you left, you left, you left the wilderness, you crossed over the Jordan into the pros promised land. That means you, you, there's a transition that happens when you are in the river of repentance. Number two, the Bible says that Jesus, just as Jesus was coming out of the water, this is what happens, he, the Bible says he saw heaven being torn open. And the spirit, number three, de descending like a dove. Num so, number one, we need to be baptized with repentance. Number two, the Bible says when Jesus was coming out of the water, he was baptized by the spirit. So, you need to be baptized into the place of repentance and you're being baptized also to the place of relationship. The place, the pre being baptized by the spirit, agonukulumangeilim. Being baptized by the Spirit, it's not shaking uncontrollably. Being baptized by the Spirit is not prophesying and telling people about their future. Being baptized by the Spirit is having an intimate relationship with the Holy Spirit. Being baptized by the Spirit is having a connection with God that no man can be able to separate. Being baptized by the Spirit is walking knowing that you're walking over under open heavens. It is the year of the outpouring, so you're completely aware of the the Spirit of God in you, leading you, speaking through you, uh, uh, teaching you what he needs to teach you. When Jesus rose, the Bible says he saw, he saw heaven torn. Heaven was torn. What is that tearing? That means when you walk into, this is the same tearing when he dies on the cross. The Bible says, what? In the Holy of Holies. And it gives you, this baptism gives you access into the Holy of Holies. It's the baptism of the Spirit where you, are com where, you just, where you just say, good morning, Holy Spirit, and shoo, the Spirit of God comes on top of you. It's an opening of the heavens so that God can begin to pour. It, you've come from the place of baptism into the place of relationship. And the heavens, the Bible says, are torn. And this is Uncle Uncle number three. When the heavens are torn, when you get this baptism, the Spirit of God descended like a dove. The Spirit of God is not a dove. The Spirit of God is not a dove. It was like a dove. So the Spirit of God descended on him as a dove. Why is it displaying him as a dove? He displays him as a dove here in the book of Mark. It will display him as water in the book of John. It will display him as fire in the book of Acts. Uh, it, it, so the, it, he has many forms that he takes. But in this time, as you're about to come into the place of fasting, what precedes fasting is the Spirit of God resting as a dove. The resting of a dove is a sensitivity. 
It's walking around knowing that there's a dove. That means I can't just move around and do things. But no, I'm walking around sensitive, cognizant. The book of John, it's the Spirit of God descended on him and remained. Woo. It remained on him. That means this is not a one-time event where uzo kulega, beso wambo pilimpilo yako, uzo, uzo, uzo tandaza manje, nabaza lana, and then you go, uh, beso yosla lema klapi. No, you're going to, you're going to con- constantly be aware that something is sitting on top of me. It descended on him as a dove and remained. Number four, the Bible says, then this is what precedes vo- uh, fasting, there was a voice that came from heaven that says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. In who, this is my beloved son whom I love. In other words, what precedes fasting, you cannot proceed fasting until you understand the father's love. That means when you understand the father's love, you know that it's not fasting that's going to do things in your life. It's because of the father loving you. That's what's going to cause things to happen in your life. Abanyabet, we're going to fasting thinking it's the fasting that's going to produce things. No, there's no power in fasting. The power is in you submitting. The power is in you aligning yourself with the presence of God. The power is you, the power is you yielding yourself. And as you yield, you are able to access the power. The Bible says, the Bible, this is number four, this is number four. The Bible says, a voice came. So in other words, what precedes fasting, can you imagine going into fasting, ungaliz with people, gangulungul? What is the point of fasting ungaliz with people? So what you need to go into when you go into fasting, you need to get into the place where you are repentant. You need to get into the place where you, your intimacy and relationship has been restored with the, with the Spirit of God. Number three, you, you are able to, to have a mind of knowing that heaven has been opened and the veil has been torn. You have full access to the Holy Spirit, full access to the presence, full access to the Holy of Holies. Number four, the Bible says the Spirit of God descends on you. You have a sensitivity about what's happening. Number five, the Bible says a voice comes from heaven. What proceeds fasting that it's useless to be in fasting and you cannot hear God. (laughs) The Bible says that those that are led by the Spirit of God, how are you led by the Spirit? By his voice. The Bible says, Utu Jesu, my sheep know my voice. You need to understand that it's useless to fast if you cannot hear God. What was the point? So who, who, because fasting is not a one-way street, it's a two-way street. That means you must be able to hear God speak to you. The Bible says, then a voice came from heaven that says, this is my beloved son. In other words, when you come into the place of, of, of fasting, you need to enter it already knowing that I am a son of God. When you're a son of God, that means I'm joint heirs with Christ. You already know what I have access to his into. I have an access to an inheritance. There is a covenant of his blood. There is the blessing of God that's resting on me. There is debt cancellation. There is healing. There is prosperity. There is peace. All these things are available. Why? Because I am a son. Number two, the Bible says, in whom I love. That means we're not fasting so that God can love us more, but we're fasting because we understand God loves us. We know he loves us. And number six, the Bible says, at once, at that moment, the Spirit sent him. He was ready. When you have gone through these steps, Jesus was ready. The Spirit of God led him. Mark, oh, Matthew chapter 4, it, he was, the Spirit of God led him into the wilderness. In other words, you are not, we're fasting. You are led by the Spirit of God. Your entire walk with God for the next 14 days is being led by God. There's, God is going to begin to speak to you. Just go into the Word of God. Let's check this out. You are going to be led where God is going to bring you into moments and speak into your life. And as soon as He opens His mouth, there will be a presence that will flood your life. Bible says immediately he was led into the wilderness. What happened to the wilderness? He was led in the wilderness so that he can fast, so that he can be tested. Fasting is not easy. You are going to be tested for the next 14 days. Everything is going to smell amazing. You are going to be tested to go to places and live a normal life while you are in fasting. The reason why you are in the wilderness is because you are away from everything that can distract you from you achieving this moment 
or from you receiving everything that you need to receive from this moment. And finally, the scripture that we opened with as I close. The Bible says, when he had fasted, I'm not going to go in through the fasting and the testings, I'm not there today, but the Bible says that when he was done fasting, he returned to Galilee. He came from Galilee. That means when you, you come from the place of obscurity, that means he came from Galilee and went back to Galilee a different man. Jesus Christ himself, when he left Galilee, he was not the same guy that came back after all these things that I've spoken about had happened to him. And I'm saying to you, you're going to go back to your job this year as a different person. You're going to go back to your business as a different person. You're going to go back to, when we come back to church, we'll come back as different people. You'll go back to your family, to your marriage, to your kids, to school life, to whatever. Whatever you're involved in, you will go back. The Bible, watch, watch how you're going to go back. The Bible says he returned in the power of the Spirit. He was led by the Spirit without power, but he came back with power. So what we're going to get out of this fasting is the power, the power of us living under an open heaven. The clouds are full. The outpouring has begun. The outpouring is, is coming into us so that it can flow other, out of us. We spoke about this last week. That is our scripture for the year. John chapter 7. That is our scripture. We are declaring one thing and one thing only. That the clouds are full. Utu Jesu, Utu Jesu, let anyone who is thirsty come to me. Let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. Uti, rivers of living water shall flow out of them. What precedes fasting is the baptism into repentance. What precedes fasting is the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is the transformation of our lives. What precedes fasting is heaven being torn so that we have access to the Holy of Holies. What precedes fasting is the Spirit descending on us like a dove. It's having a sensitivity. What precedes fasting, number five, is a voice coming from heaven where God is saying he's pleased, he loves us. Where we know that we are sons, our position is already secure. We are not securing a position by fasting. It's already secure because the voice has come. And finally, we must know that as we are coming out of this fasting after 14 days, we're going to come out with power. And lastly, the Bible says that news about him spread throughout the countryside. As you're coming out of this fasting, people from news about you is going to spread because things are going to be given to happen in your life. Situations are going to be given to change. You're changing atmospheres. You're going into schools, going into work, going back to university, doing what you're doing. News about you is going to spread because there's something that's going to be different about you. The power of God will have been rested on you. In the next couple of weeks, we're going to talk about many of us want the power, but we don't want the person. And God wants to introduce us during this fasting to the person of the Holy Spirit. We're speaking about the outpouring. What are we praying about as we are fasting? We're praying, God, outpour. Send your spirit. Lord, pour into my life. Utu Jesu, that's the scripture. This is the scripture as we're fasting. John chapter 7. Uti, let anyone who is thirsty come to me and drink. And as it is written, living waters shall flow out of them. This is the only thing that we're fasting for. God, let living waters flow out of us. That is our fasting scripture. We only have one scripture this year. We are praying the scripture every single day of our lives that God, we are thirsty, we are hungry, and we ask you to pour. We are open, we are broken, we ask you to baptize us by your spirit. We, we are repentant, we ask you that you baptize us into repentance. We are ready to access the Holy of Holies, open the windows of heaven so that we can access your presence, so that we can flow, so that we can be able to influence the environment that we're living in. I hope that as we start this time, you are ready. From tomorrow, 
We're sharing scriptures. We're encouraging one another. Uh, if you're on our WhatsApp group, we're going to start sharing a lot of messages on the WhatsApp group. Begin to encourage each other. Uh, uh, if you're connecting with us via social media, we will share as much as we can during this period so that you are encouraged almost every single day as we go through this fast. I want to pray for you as we close today's service. I'm going to pray that the Spirit of God begins to pour himself. I sense him even right now as I speak to you. I'm going to pray that the Spirit of God begins to pour himself in that living room, in that bedroom, in that kitchen, wherever you're listening. I'm praying and I'm believing that you're beginning to sense such an incredible outpouring of the Spirit of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Spirit of the living God, we thank you. We appreciate you pour into our lives as we begin this time of fasting and prayer. We are thirsty for you. We are open to you. Reveal the Son, Jesus. Reveal the Father. Oh, Spirit of the living God, we know that the clouds are full. We are ready for you to outpour yourself. Fill us again. Fill us again. We are thirsty. We are dry. We are broken. We are helpless. We need an infilling that comes from you. Father God, I pray for a baptism of the Holy Spirit. This does not need any choir. This doesn't need any band. I thank you for the authority that you've given us. I thank you for the power that you've given me. I thank you, Father God, that people will begin to experience an overflow of your presence as they're in their homes today. I thank you for an earthing in Jesus' name, a home revival in Jesus' name. I thank you, Father God, that as we come into this 14 days, we are going to come out of it with power and news about us is going to spread around all over the countryside. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. It's been really a privilege and an honor to have you share this moment with us. If you want to give into this ministry and be a part of what God is doing in our community, uh, we thank you for partnering with us. The banking details are on the screen. Partner with us. See you next week, same time, same place. Enjoy the next 14 days of the outpouring of the Spirit of God. God bless you.